Hi, I'm Cisco with Acrobotic and I'm here to show you another tip for working with your ESP8266 microcontroller. Typically, when we're working with the ESP8266, we connect to a wireless router. In this scenario, the router acts as an access point and the ESP8266 as a Wi-Fi client. When a device on a network functions as a Wi-Fi client, it is said to be in station mode. The neat feature about the ESP8266 is that it can function as a client, as an access point, or both. So, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to configure the ESP8266 to connect to a wireless router and also to be its own access point so that nearby devices can connect to it. As we typically do, we'll start with our template and make a copy into something that I'll call Wi-Fi modes. and we'll go ahead and edit that file. We're not gonna need any new libraries, so we can just go ahead and give the SSID of the new network I'm going to be using. I'll use my SSID for the variable name and Acrobotic S2 for the actual ID. You can also create a new password, but in my case, I'll use the same one that is used for accessing the local Wi-Fi network. The next things that I'll need are some configuration parameters for the new network, namely the IP address of the ESP8266 in the network I'm creating, and the class will be IP address, and the object name will be IP. I'll set it to be 192.168.11.4. Just make sure that the subnet you're using, in my case 11, doesn't conflict with the other one you'll be using for your wireless router. The second one I'll need is the gateway IP address. And I'll set that to be 192.168.11.1. And lastly, I'll need the subnet mask. With that done, we'll need to add a new line before calling the begin method in order to specify the mode in which the ESP8266 will be operating. Remember that before we were using it as a client, thus it was in station mode, and now we want it to be in a combined mode of access point and client. Once that's done, we'll simply need two lines in order to start our new network. We'll use the softapconfig method in order to set up all the parameters that we define above, the IP address, the gateway, and the subnet mask. And then we can simply call the softap method, the Wi-Fi object, with the SSID of the new network, which I called my SSID. And again, I'm going to use the same password as in the other network. And that's it, we're ready to test our code so we can go into the Arduino IDE, connect the board if it's not connected and upload it. So to test things out, I'm going to be using my phone to check for the existing wireless networks. Notice that I'm already connected to the Acrobotic Guest Network that the ESP8266 should be connected to. If I list all the other ones, Acrobotic S2 will be one of them. That's the one we configured for the ESP8266 to act as an access point. So if everything is working without changing networks, I should be able to go into my browser, point to the IP address of the ESP8266, which we already know that is .3.31, and go to that path that we set up in another video, which is toggle, in order to turn the LED on and off. So there it goes, off, and if I refresh the page, on again. So now that we know that the ESP8266 is connected to our wireless router, then we can check the access point functionality. I'll go back to my settings. 
switch networks to Acrobatic S2. It may take a while to connect, but when it finally does, you should be able to go back to the browser. And remember, now the phone is connected directly to the ESP8266 wireless network, so we need to switch the IP address to the one we configured for it. In this case, it was .11.4. So if we go to the toggle path, then the LED is off. We refresh it. Then the LED is back on. Now that the ESP8266 is configured as an access point, you can connect laptops, other smart devices to it, and use them to control it. If you like our videos, you can go to our channel page and click the support button. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave us a comment. Until next time.